Hi, I'm Joe Peacock and I'm with a company called ConnectSphere and we're specialists in IT service management. And this session we're looking at the second life cycle phase of our ITIL framework, that is service design. And service design is where we design our services to meet those needs that the business have. Not just the services, but also the underpinning principles and governing processes that are needed to deliver them. We need to design these services so efficiently and effectively that when they get into that live environment, minimal re-engineering is required. So we have to design five aspects of a service. It's not just about the service itself, but it's also about the tools that we're going to use to deliver those services and to manage them on an ongoing basis. We need to design our architectures. By that we mean our network infrastructure and how everything fits together, but we also mean our management hierarchy. How every thing hangs together from an interpersonal perspective. Who works for whom? What skills do they have? How well organised are we to deliver those services? We then need to design the processes. These are the processes that are going to help us to build and test and implement and also run those services to meet the needs of the business. And finally, we need to design our metrics. How do we know whether the services are meeting the needs of the business? We need to be able to measure them to ensure that we're always aligned to the needs of the business, always delivering value. So our first process that we look at is the process of design coordination and that is the process that oversees the service design life cycle phase. Making sure that we do design in an efficient and effective way using repeatable mechanisms for design. It's a single point of coordination for all of the activities in service design. Those activities include service catalogue management. We have to provide a service catalogue to our business. It's a very simple catalogue that just demonstrates exactly what services we provide, how to obtain those services and who should be using those services. But it's listed in terms of value to the business. What do these services do and how do the business use them? And then, of course, what we have to do is set service level targets for our services. What is it that our services need to achieve in order to ensure that they are valuable to the business? And so the process of service level management has an objective to ensure that going forward, our future IT services have defined targets and we can meet those targets, but also on an ongoing basis, our current services have targets and are meeting those targets. And where they're not meeting those targets, then we need to take action to do something about it, to improve our service delivery. Hand in hand with that is supplier management. And supplier management is doing exactly the same tasks as service level management, but with our external third party suppliers. Managing those contracts to ensure that we are getting value for money, but also that we're getting a good service from our suppliers. And then that leads us into our four warranty processes. These are those processes that looked at those aspects of warranty from service strategy. And that is availability, capacity, service continuity and IT security. And availability management has a purpose to ensure that the availability of a service meets the needs of the business. Now the targets for those needs are going to be found in our service level agreements, but availability management needs to ensure that we meet those needs on an ongoing basis. So we have to plan for the future, we plan for our services and how we will meet those needs, but also we have to look at are we meeting those needs right now? Are we achieving our targets? Are our services available when our business needs them? And then capacity management, well, do we have enough capacity? Do we have enough capacity in our network? Do we have enough capacity in our servers? Do we have enough capacity in our drives and in our space and in our memory to meet those needs? Because if we don't, then we will lose availability of that service. So we will fail on our targets. We will not therefore be delivering value. So we need to have a process that will plan for capacity in the future as well as look at our capacity usage right now and ensure that we have enough 
for the business to be able to use our services. And then security management, their role is to align our IT security with the business. It's part of corporate governance because our business sets the level of security that we need as a corporation. And our role in IT is to facilitate that. Our role is to ensure that we can deliver the right security levels. In IT, we cannot make those rules. We cannot say, this is how secure we think you should be. The business will tell us what level of security they require, and it's our role to facilitate that, and therefore, again, to deliver that value to the business. It's about ensuring that our information and our data is confidential, that we can ensure the integrity of our data and that it is available when it's required but only to those that should have access to it. And then, of course, once we've got our services up and running, we need to make sure that they stay up and running. So service continuity is paramount. We have to ensure that any of those events that the business might consider to be significant enough to be a disaster are catered for, that we can accommodate those, and that we can recover our services and continue supplying value to the business at any point in time throughout the life of a service. And so that's it, service design in a nutshell. But if you do need to find any information about the rest of the ITIL service management framework, then please take a look at our website. It's www.connectsphere.com.